Brothers and sisters, we continue talking about death, which we spoke about and addressed a few aspects of last week based on the narration that is narrated by Abdullah ibn Shikhir radiallahu anhu in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Mathal ibn Adam wa ila jambihi tis'atu wa tis'oona maniyya in akhtaatuhu al-manaya waqa'a fi al-mawti waqa'a fi al-harami in akhtaatuhu al-manaya waqa'a fi al-harami hatta yamut The similitude of the son of Adam is like that of a man who is surrounded with 99 calamities. If all calamities miss him, he falls into old age, meaning he grows old until he dies. This is reported by Al-Bayhaqi, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. The issue of death is a reality and a fact that no one disputes, Muslims and non-Muslims alike. It is something that will inevitably happen, but yet people are extremely heedless of and hardly remember. And for this reason, for the heedlessness of people, Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah the Almighty, the Exalted, frequently spoke about it in the Quran, and the Prophet ﷺ frequently reminded the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, about death. In the book of Imam al-Tirmidhi, and it was classified as an authentic narration by Al-Albani, Ubay ibn Ka'b narrates that, and pay attention to this narration, brothers and sisters, because it is really astonishing. He said, whenever the first third of the night would pass, the Prophet ﷺ would wake up, go out and say, All people, remember Allah! All people, remember Allah! Meaning, wake up, worship him, remember his punishment and his reward, so you will have fear and hope. Wake up, remember Allah, the first blow has come. And that's the blow that makes or causes all life to cease. Followed by the second blow, and that is the blow marking the advent or the beginning of the day of resurrection. And then he would say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ja'a al-mawtu bima fi, Ja'a al-mawtu bima fi, Come, death has come, with all that it includes. Death has come, with all that it includes. Now I want you to imagine, the situation of the companions, who would be sleeping, and suddenly, after one third of the night, they would hear the sound of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying aloud, all oh, people remember Allah, death has come. What would be the situation of people? What would be anyone's situation in that matter? It is only because death is something that is important to remember that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do something like this. He used to utilize all opportunities and take advantages, advantage of all chances to remind them with this fact and this unavoidable reality. Ubayy ibn Ka'b, uh, rather Al-Bara ibn Azib radiallahu anhu is telling us a story that the Prophet sallallahu was in a funeral one day and when he reached the graveyard and then walked to the grave where the man is going to be placed, he went down on his knees 
and started weeping and weeping and weeping until he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wet the soil with his tears and then he turned to the companions radiallahu anhum and said oh brothers for the like of this day strive meaning work hard in preparation for this moment work hard in preparation for your death this is reported by ibn majah and classified as sound by al albani and then he would give give them this general reminder during all times abu huraira radiyallahu anhu narrated and this is reported by al bukhari he said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say frequently mention and remember the destroyer of pleasures referring to death what is the benefit one gains from reminding himself remembering and reminding others with death one of the benefits is that one protects himself from being enslaved to this worldly life see when one's concern becomes this dunya this life and he becomes heedless of death and the hereafter his main concern will be this life and thus he will be enslaved to it slowly but surely that's why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam supplicated against such type of people in the book of an imam al-bukhari narrated by abu huraira radiyallahu anhu the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said may he be miserable or she for that matter who is this person against whom the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is supplicating he said may he be mis- miserable the slave of the dinar and the dil- dirham golden currency and silver currency the slave of silk clocks what is the description of this slave of dunya slave of this worldly life he said if he's given from this life he becomes content he rejoices he's happy he's gained more of this life if he's given he's content and if he's not given he's discontent so the scale he weighs contentment is how much of this worldly life he possesses he compiles the one whose main concern is dunya will eventually if not initially become a slave of this life and therefore frequently reminding oneself and remembering death protects the person from being enslaved to this life another benefit is that a person becomes indifferent of this life he becomes ascetic he's not keen he's not eager to collect more and more see being ascetic is not to wear to wear something that's worn out or dirty that's not the essence of it being ascetic is when you utilize whatever allah provides you from this worldly life to serve the main concern in your heart which is what comes after death which is the hereafter and the only way one can reach this level of making his concern or his main concern the hereafter is by frequently reminding himself and mentioning to himself death this worldly life will no longer matter to him abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu narrated 
as reported by Ibn Majah and classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, the Prophet وسلم, slept once on a woven mat. And when he woke up, it left marks on his side. He said, so we told him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, should we not bring you something softer? He said, I have no concern for this worldly life. I am in it like a traveler who goes under the shade of a tree for a short while and then leaves it and departs to his destiny. This shade is this life and the departure is death. So the one who knows he's dying will not strive to obtain this life. Can you imagine if you're traveling from here to Mecca, for example, on a Umrah by land, and you pass by Riyadh, for example, would you imagine yourself buying property and furnishing the house and buying a new, a new car? That's insane for people in this worldly life. They would tell you, you're staying here for a couple of days and you're doing all of this? And you know that in a couple of days you're going to go on continuing to your final destination? So the one who is or who realizes that death is certainly coming will have no concern in this life. Only enough to what will make him closer to Allah Azza wa Jal and serve the purpose of what comes after that. Another point is arrogance and pride. See, it's the tendency and inclination of human nature that when one becomes rich, becomes wealthy, holds a post, right? Has a lofty rank in the society, becomes of authority of some type. The me in him, me, I, grows so large that it threatens his life. But the one who remembers and he who reminds himself that one day I'm dying, then he will not become arrogant when dealing with others because he realizes that he's going to die and then stand for accountability in front of Allah Azza wa Jal and he will held, be held accountable for his words, his actions, his pride and arrogance towards others. He will not reject the truth because rejecting the truth is arrogance. He will accept the truth regardless of the status of the person who is conveying this truth to him or reminding him with it. So, remembering death helps one suppress this arrogance and controlling it. Accountability. The more you think of death, the more one becomes afraid of the meeting with Allah Azza wa Jal. How would that meeting with Allah Azza wa Jal be? What am I going to say? What will I answer? And this motivates the person to hold himself to account all the time. That's why Umar radiallahu anhu used to say to people when he was the caliph, O oh people, bring yourself to account because before you're taken to account. Weigh your deeds before your deeds are weighed and be prepared for the major display in front of the one from whom nothing will be hidden. Remembering death 
helps one hold himself to account and therefore improve his performance and become closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. One last point I would like to mention is that had it not been for death, and had it not been that we realized that death is coming, no one would have been encouraged to hasten in doing righteous deeds. They would have taken it easy. People would have become lazy. But the fact that the unexpected guest can be here anytime in itself is a motivator for one to hasten to perform good deeds. Allah Azza wa Jal reminded us with this in the Quran and encouraged us to hasten before it's too late. Saying, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقُنَاكُمْ And spend from what we have given you. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ Before death comes or approaches one of you, فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِي Then he would say, O my Lord, delay me. Delay me. At the time of death, we would love to get a second extension before we die. Oh my Lord, delay me for a short term so I can spend in charity and be amongst the righteous. The chances here were still alive. Let's work before it becomes too late. So now we know the importance and the benefits of remembering death. How can one remind himself with death? There are different things one can do in order to remind himself with death. One is visiting the graveyard. And reflecting on the situation of people who are already underground. To attending funerals and seeing people being buried and putting yourself in the place of that person who's being buried. Number three, reciting the Quran. The book of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's full of reminders of the hereafter and death and encouragements to remember death and the hereafter and work for them. Also, visiting ill people, especially those with serious illnesses, like people with cancer and so on and so forth. Because that will surely remind you that death is close because many of these people are very young. This will make us realize that and become certain that death doesn't recognize your age. When it's your time, it's your time. Finally, another means of remembering death is reading stories, watching clips that talk about death. that gives you stories of people who died, that tell you statements from the Salaf, and how keen they were on remembering death and reminding others with death. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, may Allah have mercy on him, used to say, if my heart becomes heedless for an hour from the matter of death, it will be corrupted. Zuhair ibn Nu'aym, may Allah have mercy on him, was asked by a man, he said, advise me, 
He said, Beware, lest death comes to you while you are heedless. Don't let death approach you when you're heedless of it. And one day, Sa'id ibn Musayyib, may Allah have mercy on him, was asked, How did you wake up this morning? He said, I woke up expecting death. So they were never heedless of death. They were always mindful and heedful of death and reminded others with it. Where are we going to die? What is the spot? What is the place? Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتٍ And no soul knows on which land it will die. But that land which Allah Azza wa Jal decreed for you to die on, or that spot, be it in the air or on land or in the sea, you will reach it. At the time of death, you will be there. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when Allah wills to take the soul of a slave, He decrees a need for him in that place. So he goes there and faces his fate and destiny. He meets death. He walks towards it. This is reported by Al-Hakim and classified as authentic by Al-Albani. When will we die? Again, non-disclosed. Unknown, but it comes suddenly, without permission, without introductions. And when it comes, there is no delay, as Allah says in the Quran. And Allah will not delay a soul when its time comes. But rest assured, for again, it's human nature that we worry about provision. You and I will not leave until we have exhausted and consumed all provision that was meant to be ours. That's decreed by Allah to be ours. Abu Umama narrated, and this is reported by Al-Hakim, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Jibreel has inspired me that no soul will die until it consumes all its provisions and exhausts, exhausts its time. So when we finish provision, only then will we die. No one will leave having something his behind in this dunya. Now, have you ever thought of how long is our real life in this worldly life? This is not a riddle or a puzzle. It's an average of about five years. Let's assume a person lives 60 years. The average number of hours of sleep is eight per day. That's one third. That's 20 years gone. When do we reach the age when we will be held accountable? According to the majority of the scholars, it's the age of 15. Deduct that from 40. That's 25. If one starts working at the age of 15, when he reaches that age of accountability, and he works the average of eight hours, that's another 15 years. Of the 25 left, that's 10 years remaining. How long would one spend daily on eating, drinking, and relieving himself? Daily? An average of what? Two, three hours? That's another four, five years? Six years? Depending on how uh, the appetite is, right? 
That leaves us with about four or five years, brothers and sisters. Is this worth striving so hard to obtain? Is it worth giving the hereafter for it? Five years out of the 60? Four years out of the 60? Isn't akhirah, isn't the hereafter, isn't jannah, isn't seeing the face of Allah Azza wa Jal, isn't meeting Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more deserving, worthier of striving for and utilizing these short years instead of wasting them? How many hours do we spend on the internet? I'm not going to say TV because internet now is everything. How much time do we spend, spend on lawful entertainment? One of the scholars was asked once, is it permissible to do this? And he was asked about a sport that usually takes about an hour and a half to two hours to finish a game. He said, I'm not going to address the halal and the haram, but I'm going to ask the brother who is asking me, do you really have two hours a day you can spare? away from Allah and spending it on this even if it's lawful? Isn't it worth utilizing these times in preparation for the meeting of death? Shumayt ibn Ajlan said people with regards to death and the hereafter are one of two types. Either a person who takes provision from this life in preparation for death and the hereafter, or a person who enjoys this life and is heedless of the hereafter. Again, the choice is ours. We make the call. But brothers and sisters, let's make our decision fast and make the right decision because when death comes, nothing will avail us. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to be mindful and heedful of death and the year after, and to enable us work hard and strive for this moment, the moment of death. Allahumma ameen.